Miss Jason here along with Freckles the Frog ready to begin a new day and take a new adventure with you. So for this adventure I think we're going to need some flippers, we're going to need a pair of goggles, and I think our floaties because we are going to be taking our adventure down underneath the water today. So everybody Put those Scooby Snacks in a Ziploc bag and seal it up tight because we don't want them to get soggy. Because who wants to eat a soggy Scooby Snack? Definitely not me. So, everybody, go put them in the bag and let's get ready to go underneath the water and learn about underwater habitats and those mysterious animals that live down there. Well, guys, we made it. We made a big splash coming down here, but we're here. Now, we're going to learn about some of the habitats that contain water. The freshwater habitats, guys. This water is the kind of water that we drink. It is fresh. It tastes good. It is cool most of the time. The water is not salty. These Freshwater habitats includes lakes, ponds, streams, rivers. All of these water habitats are found on the land. And you will find a ton of moss around it. You will find different muds, different grasses, algae, pussy willows, and you will find lily pads. You're not going to find trees growing in the water too much. You see them on the outside of the water, around the lakes and the ponds. There are animals that do live in freshwater. You have a lot of freshwater fish, including the salmon. You also have turtles, you have toads, you have frogs, then you have insects like the mosquitoes and the flies. They make their home around swamps and bogs. Also, down south, the alligator and the crocodile are some freshwater animals as well. They like to swim in it. Also, in Africa, where we were with the savanna, there is an animal called the hippo. And the hippo, he's a large freshwater animal. He likes to sit in there and he likes to bathe all day long. Next, guys, we have the coral reefs. Now guys, the coral reef is considered the rainforest of the sea. It is beautiful. There are mountains and mountains of coral just every which way. And coral, guys, it is actually an animal. It looks like a rock, but it's not. It's actually considered an animal. Coral can have many different colors. It can come with in large and it can be small it can be pointed and sharp or it could be round like a ball coral is amazing it's an amazing little animal and it grows and plenty of animals make their homes throughout the coral you have little fish you have seaweeds, you have sea urchins, you have starfish, you have little crabs that scurry around, you have seahorses. All of these little animals live around and in the coral reefs. The Great Barrier Reef is the largest coral reef 
in the world. So it is the largest in the ocean. It is so, so large that if you're up walking on that moon, you can see it from outer space. You can see where it is and how big it is. I don't know about you, but I kind of want to go up on that moon and, and see if I can see the wreath because uh, that seems pretty cool. And last but not least, guys, is the ocean habitat. The ocean is huge. It makes up half of the world that we live on. So that means there is more water and ocean than there is land on this earth. So that sort of makes you believe that there are actually more sea creatures and marine life than there is life on land. Hmm, interesting thought. We have five major oceans and all of these oceans are made up of salt water. So I wouldn't go drinking it because it doesn't taste very good and if you drink too much of it it's it's not healthy for your body it can make your tummy sick so let's just stick to the fresh water now the five major oceans are the pacific ocean which is the largest of them all then you have the arctic ocean which we talked a little bit about in the polar regions and that is the coldest ocean then we have the indian you have the South, Southern Ocean, and you also have the Atlantic Ocean. Now, guys, I am sure every single one of you at some point has put your toes in the Atlantic Ocean. Because yes, guys, if you go to the beach in Massachusetts, that muzzle state, you will be at the Atlantic Ocean Beach. That is the ocean that Bad, big Bad King George sent his redcoats over across to fight the Minutemen, guys. And uh, that's also where uh, the Minutemen sort of dumped a whole bunch of tea in the Atlantic Ocean. Underneath the salt water, you will find many different things. You will find corals, of course, because the, the coral reefs are in salt water as well. You will find the kelp the seaweed, the seagrass, you will see rocks, you will find the sand that you, it's sometimes rough and sometimes it's soft, depending on where you are. You have rocks, you have seashells, you have trenches, you have caves, you have even mountain ranges underneath the water. Also, there are underwater volcanoes everywhere. And guys, yes, they do erupt. Hey, and if you keep on swimming, you probably will find a sunken ship or two. Maybe a bur buried pirate's treasure too, you never know. Also, it's an amazing thing, but under the water holds cities sometimes. Whole entire cities have been lost to the ocean, either by terrible storms that came up or the land just caved in. You can find cities underneath the waters of the ocean. Pretty cool, huh? Now, us as humans, we cannot live under the water because, uh, well, we need air. We need to breathe and we need to breathe air. We don't breathe water, but there are animals who do breathe the water and they know how to swim and they know how to navigate through those waters because the waters can be different temperatures different strengths, there's waves, sometimes there's not waves, and these animals, they got this down. They got the swimming down, they know how to zigzag through everything. They also have gills, and the gills allow them to breathe underneath the water. So some of these animals include octopuses, you have sharks, you have jellyfish, you have squids, and you have eels, and you have many, many, many different kinds of saltwater fish, like the clownfish. Also, there are some animals in the sea that do like to breathe the air, but 
They spend a lot of time underneath the water swimming around. These guys are dolphins and whales. They do pop up so they can breathe air as well, but most of the time they are down underneath the sea swimming around there. Now, there are a ton, a ton of sea and marine life to talk about, but we can only talk about a few. So, I think it's time to stand on up and we're going to get ready to move our bodies a little. And after we finish swimming around, we'll talk about a couple animals that live underneath the sea. Hey guys, so hope you had fun hunting with those sharks, <laughs> but now it's time to get back to work and we're going to learn about the seahorse first, guys. The seahorse is a very small, teeny animal. He is very small and he lives 
among the reefs and the shallow waters of the ocean. He doesn't live down in the deep, deep ocean. He lives in the shallow waters where pretty much we can stand and when it's not over our heads. See, hardly, the water hardly goes over our feet. That's where he lives. He also, guys, got his name, the seahorse, because first, he lives in the sea. Second, look at his face, guys. Doesn't it look like the horse's face? It has a long snout like the, the face of a horse. So that is how he got his name, the seahorse. Now this fish, it does not have scales. All of this, guys, they're bone plates. So it's almost like he has a skeleton on the outside of his body instead of inside like we do. This bony plated helps him protect himself from the other fish who are going to eat him because who really wants to eat something that's crunchy and covered with bones? I mean, I, it doesn't sound good to me. So that's probably why he has a whole bunch of bony plates on him. Also, guys, he is one of the slowest swimming fish in the ocean. And one of the reasons is that he does not swim horizontal, which means he doesn't swim like this at all. He swims standing up vertical like this. So that's how he goes across the ocean like this, which it's a very slow way to, to swim, really, if you think about it. You try. It's kind of slow. So this guy, he needs a lot of rest because he, he tires out from using all his muscle to try to swim standing up. So what he does is he attaches himself. He takes his little curly tail and he hooks it around a piece of seaweed or something that's stuck to the ground of the ocean. And he curls it around and then he just rests there. Takes a nap, of course. He takes the nap standing up. So a little uncomfortable for me to take a nap standing up, but hey, I guess it works for some animals, and the seahorse is one of them. All right, guys, the next animal we're going to talk about is the octopus. Now, this guy lives in the saltwater oceans as well, and he has eight legs. Count them. Eight legs, and these legs are called tentacles, and each tentacle has suction cups on the bottom of it. Now these suction cups are good for catching their food and they're good for sticking to things like rocks and corals. So imagine you had a whole bunch of sticky suction cups on your hands. You'd be able to climb the walls without getting hurt or slipping down because your suction cups would stick right to them. This guy, he has a very soft body, no bones. And because it's soft, he can squeeze and squish himself into the smallest cracks and crevices and pretty much turn into any shape. He has great eyesight and is the master of camouflage. He can camouflage himself to look like the rocks around him, the seaweeds, whatever he squeezed himself into, he can camouflage himself. He can change to look like that. So the so animals don't see him and don't eat him because he doesn't want to be eaten. I wouldn't either. And this guy, if he does see an enemy, he squirts ink to protect himself. So he squirts the ink out and it blinds whoever is trying to catch him. And when they're in the darkness covered with ink, he can swim really fast away. So that is the octopus, guys, and he is considered very smart as well. Huh, you know what? I wonder if this guy knows his ABCs like you guys. Now, guys, I think it's time that we get out of the water, take our floaties off, make sure you grab a towel to dry off because we are going to do our art project next. So let's go step out of this water and then we'll return and do our art project and we're back guys Whew, i hope you all is all dried off because you know i was a little chilly i had to wrap myself up in a towel today for art 
we are going to be making the seahorse, guys. So we're going to make our very own seahorse. So let's go see what supplies we need, and let's go get them. Okay, guys, you're going to need a box of crayons for this. You're going to need definitely a glue stick. I chose green for my body, so you're going to need some colored paper, or you can use a paper plate, or you can use just white paper. Do it on, draw it on white paper, and then color it in. So I chose the green for my body and my head. I chose orange for my lips, and then you have, I had a yellow and a purple that I used for its bony plates on his back. Like I said, any color you wish, he's your little seahorse. Also, guys, we're going to need our scissors. Remember, scissors are a tool, not a toy, guys. So, no cutting hair, no cutting clothes, no cutting yourself or friends. Now, the circle that is largest goes on the bottom, and the little circle goes on top when you hold your scissors. Your three fingers, your pointed, your middle, and your ring, Go right through the big hole. Your thumb goes through the little hole up top. Then you have your nice alligator chomping movements going on. So let's get started. Let's draw some shapes and then we can start cutting. So guys, because I decided to use green for my body, you need half a circle on the green paper. Now, you're probably asking, Miss Jason, how did you get those lines of the circle so round? My secret, I traced a plate. So you have a plate or a bowl, any circular object would do. And you put it halfway over the paper. And then you can just take your pencil or your marker and trace the circle. And then you get a nice half outline. Or if you have paper plates at home, you can just cut a paper plate right in half, and that will also make half of a circle, just like so. Just cut it right in half, and there you go for his body. So, after we have the body all cut out, it is time to cut out our circle. So we're going to need two smaller round circles and one's gonna be for his tail, and one's gonna be for his head. So I need you to cut both of those circles out now. Then, here's that fun shape that I know mommies and daddies all love to draw, is the heart. We're gonna do one heart for his little lips going on. Also, the white paper, two little circles on the white paper for his eyeballs that you're gonna cut out later. So you're going to put everything together, his body, his head, his, and his eyeballs with the glue stick. Okay, guys, now that you have your head cut out, your body, which remember, the round part is his belly. So when you put the lips on, you have to make sure that the lips are going in the same direction as your belly bump. I put one eyeball on it because it's sort of a side view of the seahorse. Now it's time for the tail. So you're going to take your other circle, guys. And this is kind of tricky, but I'm sure you guys will be able to do it. Now you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut. You're going to make a nice cut in the middle and you're just going to follow the edge of the circle and turn your circle to make a nice little curvy spiral, guys. I know, kind of difficult. Kind of comes out looking like a C. Then you just glue it right on to the bottom of your seahorse. Make sure the little curved point is in the direction, the same direction as your belly bump. So it goes just like that, guys. So now he has a nice curved tail that he can hook onto those plants so he can rest. Now comes the fun part. You're gonna do his bony little plates. 
Like I said, I picked yellow and purple for my plates. You don't have to. You can pick whatever color you would like and make them a colorful seahorse, whatever you would like. These guys, I don't have any drawn shapes for these. I'm just going to cut up my paper into little strips, just like so. Free cut. Just cut the paper, though. It's not free cut for everything. And just make little plates, sort of like you're doing confetti, and just snip away. Watch out for your fingers. Once you have all the little bony plates, then you're just going to glue them, and you're going to glue them onto the flat edge of your seahorse. So you don't put them on his belly, which is the round part. You put them all going down his back. Because remember, the seahorse has the bony plates on his back. So you're going to put them all the way down. You can put some on his tail if you want. You can put some on his head, whatever you would like. So in the end, your seahorse comes looking out like this. Bony plates on his back and his head. He has a nice smiley face with a beautiful big eyeball. You can put two eyeballs if you would like. Like I said, I only put one because it's a side view. So that is our seahorse, guys. And this is our lesson about the marine animals and where they live. I hope you guys had fun and enjoyed it. Now, I want you to go finish those Scooby Snacks. Make sure they're not drenched with water because that would not be cool. And then have a great night, guys. And I will see you guys soon. Miss and love you. Bye.